Okay. Well, thank you for coming out on this beautiful South Carolina day. As you know, they're getting more and more beautiful since the the storm, the hurricane has, has gone. Our neighboring states have got hit as hard as we did. And as Mayor White has uh, so vividly explained, the upstate hadn't seen anything like this before. This is, we've had, we've had ice storms, but we've never had a, a hurricane. I understand that uh, Mount, Mount Mitchell, the wind speed was 107 miles an hour. Yeah, that's, that's hurricane. So what we've had is in a place that is not used to it, we've had the ice storms. We've had lots of hurricanes on the coast. We've seen high water. We've seen cars being submerged. But to have all your power knocked out, or have 1.3 million uh, outages in a system of 3 million, 1.3 out of, out of 3 million were dead for days. And about 450,000 yet to go in our state before all the power is on. The power companies are telling us that we should expect great progress by the end of this week. That is by Friday, the majority ought to, that are not on now ought to be, ought to be turning on. And the, some at the end of the roads that are so far out in the country may be the last ones to have power restored. So we want everyone to know that we're thinking of the, we're thinking of the people, we're thinking of the struggles they're going through, the, the mamas with children that are, are disoriented and upset. We know it's rough. But I want to tell you, the team that we have in South Carolina, this South Carolina spirit is something that is very rare. And it's a reflection of a number of things. One is, this is the reason so many businesses from around the world want to come here. It's because of the people of this state that they all say are different. And in this struggle, in this, this trial that we're going through now, that spirit has been demonstrated. We met with President Biden a little while ago at the airport. Uh, uh, Senator Graham was there, Senator Congressman Duncan, Congressman Timmons, and Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina, and they had a lot of flooding there. We have not had that yet, and we don't expect to have much except as the rivers crest down in the lower part of the state. But they are struggling as well. But the president promised whatever we needed, he would provide. So did Secretary, excuse me, uh, FEMA Administrator uh, Deanne Criswell, and we spoke to him about the struggles that we're having, about the energy, and we asked for the emergency energy declaration, emergency declaration that he signed uh, and granted uh, just two days ago. They, it includes 13 counties. There are seven more counties that need to be added to that, and they, as soon as we receive that information, and we're asking and seeking, as soon as we receive that information, those counties, that will include all the counties that have been hit, will be available for the assistance uh, from, from FEMA, both personal as well as, as the institutions, the government institutions, as bridges and buildings and so forth. But we explained to the president that we needed that declaration. He agreed that it would be forthcoming. We explained that our farms, the farmers have been hit hard. There's no crop insurance for most of the things we produce. Cotton and soybean have crop insurance. But other, other things like pecans, uh, peaches, and all your, your livestock, chickens, poultry, all of that sort of thing are not covered at all. So we've asked the president to consider putting that in as an appropriation this time, and the congressman and the senator have agreed that they will work on that as well. Finally, we know because of the strike at the port, that's putting additional pre pressure on us. We know that one out of 10 people in our state, all over the state, don't work for the port, but the port works for them. And the, the impact of that strike, uh, we hope it'll be over soon, but that will be another test that we'll have to undergo and so we're working hard and we mentioned that to the president as well is that perhaps she sh should intervene because we can't handle two disasters at one time without major dislocations i want to thank the great volunteers in this state the people that are in this arena bond secures wellness arena we've had a tour we've met them they're making sandwiches got volunteers we have nurses we have people from all over the place doctors and they're all working to see that our people are accommodated. 
these natural disasters are going to happen. We were prepared. We had everyone on the field. We always prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Sometimes we prepare for the worst and the best arrives. The hurricanes, the bad weather goes in another direction. This time it, it came right on. It was going in another direction and then came towards us. But this state is strong. We are resilient. We have everyone is on the field. The power companies have thousands of linemen out working to get the power started again. And I want to remind everybody, when these power, when these trees fell, they knocked down the power poles. They knocked down the lines. Do not go near those power, those trees on those, that are entangled in those power lines because you will get shocked. Don't try to do that yourself. Don't go out for the first time in your life with a chainsaw and try to clean debris out of, out of the road because if there's a wire in it, you may suffer some serious injury. But that is one thing that's slowing us down. Slowing down the great progress that we're making is we have to wait for the linemen to get those wires out of the way before we can remove that debris. But the plan is to, when that happens, remove the debris, put it on the side of the road, open up commerce, and then we'll come back over the next few weeks and get rid of all of that, that debris. So that's where we stand right now. Right now we're at about, as I said, 450 or 60 outages in the state and that number is falling uh, as we speak but i want to thank everybody for participating and like to call on some more information from senator graham lindsey graham thank you governor yeah whatever problems we have me with a chainsaw is not the solution i <laughs> promise you that uh, so i've learned a lot today i've spent most of the day with the governor i started in pickens at the electric co-op blue ridge uh, the biggest storm they've ever had in terms of knocking poles down was 300, they're pushing 700, and they're not even done yet. This is Hurricane Hugo for the upstate. Anybody old enough to remember Hurricane Hugo and what it looked like? There are parts of the upstate that have just been flattened. I've never quite seen anything like it. Mother Nature packed a real punch here. I've spent most of the day with the governor, and I am very impressed with him and his team. This is a team sport to our law enforcement folks behind me. Your deputies have been without power too. They probably had problems at their house, but they're, they're out there protecting our house. It's a good time to remind people, if you come to South Carolina, we do believe in the Second Amendment. So if you come here and take something, you may run into some resistance. Sure you, will. you will. So I just want to thank so many people. There's almost 50 people right here. This is a small hospital. Why are they here? We just run out of space. Now they're wanting to bring people from Asheville down because they're out. So everybody's pitching in. It, this is an incredible experience for me. So to President Biden, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, paying attention to our needs. I think we've had good working relationship between the federal government. We talked about the supplemental. Uh, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars to make this part of the country whole. I mean, their people have lost everything. And we got a lot of backfilling to do. And I promised that I would work with President Biden as soon as we can, and I think we should go back in session, quite frankly. I think we need to get back in Washington and deal with this crisis in a responsible way. But we're looking at well north of $100 billion, a lot more than that when it's all said and done. As to the port, uh, the governor stressed to President Biden that one in 10 jobs depend on the port. Critical infrastructure under federal law includes ports. Now, why do we do that? Why do we want to harden our ports from attack by foreign entities, terrorists, or crooks? Because if a port goes down, we go down. So I find it odd that under federal law, ports are considered critical infrastructure, and we're having our port shut down in the middle of just a catastrophe uh, in this part of South Carolina and North Carolina. I'm all for people being treated fairly, but I've urged President Biden not to let this go on much longer. What have I learned from my doctors today? That the hospitals are going to run out of supplies, and a lot of it comes from the port. What did I learn from the port today? $200 million of economic activity per day at that port. 7,000 trucks in or out, picking up and delivering goods 
and it's completely shut down. <clears throat> this hurricane was Mother Nature. The port problem is man-made. So I'm urging President Biden, do not let this linger. Because if you have this port and other ports on these cut coasts shut down at the critical time, it will be a calamity. I'd also, I did mention we have some volunteers from out of state. There's a group from Louisiana downstairs right now that answered the call. And we've received telephone calls uh, urging promising help from Governor Landry, from Brian Kemp in, in uh, Georgia. Of course, Roy Cooper is here, here today and uh, others as well. I also got a, a call from President Trump promising whatever he can do. So a lot of people around the country are watching, playing, paying attention. And it, it gives me great comfort to know that they're interested in our welfare. And in the past, we, we have sent We've sent teams to the other states, and now they're sending those that are not struck by the same calamity are sending them to us. So that's a, it's very comforting. Congressman Timmons. Good afternoon. Um, first, I just want to say how thankful we are to have Governor McMaster at the helm. Um, it wasn't long ago we were dealing with COVID, and he got us through that. And now we have a hurricane, and he's going to get us through this. And his team in Columbia at the EMD has done an absolutely incredible job um, really keeping us safe. The first few days were very challenging. Uh, Duke Power had to get um, emergency power to our hospitals and then to our gas terminals and then, then to our gas stations. And uh, once we got that done, I mean, we're basically living in the 1930s. You can go to the grocery store, you can get food. You're not going to have electricity for a while. I don't think I'm going to have ele electricity until next week. I know Duke Power is saying Friday, but I'm prepared for next week. And I'm telling you that because Everybody should be prepared for next week. I know it's uncomfortable at times. We're lucky it's getting down in the 60s at night, but um, we're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. And I'd also like to thank Sheriff uh, Lewis and Sheriff Wright behind us for keeping us safe. Um, there were times when there were, you know, two-hour waits at the gas stations, and uh, we maintain the rule of law, and uh, that's very important. Um, Duke has been working overtime. They have thousands and thousands of linemen. Just yesterday, I went and watched some uh, seven linemen from uh, Blue Ridge Electric get uh, a pole back up. It took them five or six hours. Blue Ridge Electric, like the senator said, has 700 poles down. Uh, Duke's got thousands, six, seven, eight thousand poles down. And they have probably about that many linemen working on it, but this takes time. It takes time, and areas that have more challenging terrain will take longer. So we need to be patient. Again, we're all safe. We're very fortunate for that. Um, we need to be praying for our, our friends across the border in Asheville. They are struggling a lot more. We need to remember that we are fortunate. We have gotten through the hard part, but we got to have patience to get through the rest. Um, last but certainly not least, I reached out to the Biden administration a number of days ago, and the IRS as well. Um, people that filed an extension don't uh, or have to pay their taxes on October 15th. The IRS has agreed to extend um, people that have been affected by the hurricane, uh, their, their date until May. So talk to your tax filer, talk to your accountant, make sure that that applies to you. Um, but uh, it is very, we're very fortunate they've been able to react so quickly and extend that relief. So uh, the office has a website, timmons.house.gov slash hurricane. We have a lot of resources there. Disasterassistance.gov is a, a great stop to see whether you are available and uh, what you're eligible for um, in, in regards to relief or damage to your property that your insurance is not going to cover. Again, um, have patience. We are all safe. There's plenty of gas. There's food in the grocery stores. Um, neighbors need to help neighbors. If you don't have power and your neighbor does, maybe see if you can wash your clothes. Um, you know, you got friends, you got family, uh, rely on them. Um, Duke says Friday for the vast majority of people, but it could very well be early next week for some. So again, I want to thank the governor and his team for the leadership they have um, shown here in South Carolina. And again, we are very fortunate um, and we need to pray for our friends in North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for your leadership. Senator Graham, thank you and law enforcement. What a wonderful job. I know you're working hard. Thank you for all that you do. And uh, also, I'd like to thank our nonprofit community. As uh, Secretary of State, I oversee the nonprofit community here in the state of South Carolina. And we have a wonderful nonprofit community, one that wants to serve uh, this state and help others. You know, we are a small state, but we have a 
big heart. So I want uh, your donation to go to those in need. I want the most of your money to go to those in need. So I want you to be vigilant. I want you to research these organizations. I want you to make sure that they are registered in the Secretary of State's office. I want you to make sure that they are not pressuring you, that uh, a reputable organization will not use pressure tactics to get you to contribute. Also, do not give these organizations your social security number. If you do pay online, use a credit card. Beware of identity theft. And also, uh, if you are uncomfortable about a solicitation, you can contact the South Carolina Secretary of State's office at sos.sc.gov. You can file a confidential complaint, and we will look at that complaint we will investigate that, and if need be, we will put that organization on notice. Also, if you receive a solicitation, uh, about a year ago, we started a new app. It's called Give Smart SC. You can download it on your phone, and while you are receiving a solicitation, you can go into that app, see if they're registered, see how much they raise, see how much goes to their programs, see how much they spend on fundraising. All that information is right there. On, uh, at your fingertips, and then at the end, you can file a confidential complaint. Uh, South Carolina is wonderful. Neighbors are helping neighbors. And uh, if I can leave you with this, uh, thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for contributions. But what I want to tell you is give from the heart, but please give smart. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Dr. Ed Summer, Department of Health. Thank you, Governor. Uh, first of all, let me thank the governor, Senator Graham, Representative Timmons for coming to visit our shelter today. Uh, for a little bit of information, this is a medical needs shelter. Uh, we have eight of these across the upstate right now, and these are designed for people who have medical needs. Perhaps they have medical equipment, uh, they have an oxygen generator, but then they have medical needs that require a constant supply of electricity. You'll also see there's some folks here in hospital beds because that's what they need. So for folks whose power is out and they can't you know, get the medical needs they need at home, they can come here and we will help them with that. We will take care of them and make sure that they are well. Uh, we, this facility that you're in right now has a capacity of 110 people with special needs, I'm sorry, medical needs, and 110 caregivers so they can bring someone with them. Um, so that's a total of 220 people that can be here. Uh, we've had as many as 47, so that would be 94 total. Right now we're at about half of that because thankfully the power is starting to come back on and we're able to start getting people to go back home. Uh, but we will be here as long as they need us. Uh, you know, these shelters are a team effort. Let me also emphasize that. Although this is a Department of Public Health facility, we have great support here from Prisma. Uh, the Prisma staff are here. They are doing a great job with us. We have medical students and nursing students from University of South Carolina Greenville that are working with us, volunteering. And we've gotten great, uh, great support from Beth and her team that run the arena. They are not charging us for this. We are, they are giving this arena uh, space to us at no charge and have been incredibly supportive. So th again, this is a great team effort. Uh, I think you'll see that a lot of people are being helped here. And again, there are a number of these all across the upstate because this is very important because we never want to lose someone because they couldn't get their medical care or the medical supplies that they needed. But let me just finish by a couple of things, uh, safety issues. First of all, still a lot of folks with power out, a lot of folks using generators. Generators can be a great thing, but you have to be very careful with them. Please don't put the generator inside or even very close to a door or window. Really, ideally, you should be 20 feet away from the dwelling. Don't put it in an, in an attached garage because carbon monoxide can kill you very quickly. It's odorless. You'll never know. You'll simply fall asleep and you'll never wake up. So please be careful if you're using a generator. Again, as we talked about, be careful with heat illness. Try to avoid activities during the height of the day. It's still pretty hot out there. Make sure you're staying hydrated. And as we've talked about food safety, if you've got a refrigerator or freezer with food and the power's still out, throw it out. Get new food. We will work with you on that, but please, you know, Throw the food out because it is not safe at this point. So again, thank you all. Let me especially thank all the heroes that are volunteering here who I mentioned. Uh, this happens because of them. With that, Governor, thank you very much. Can you mention the hospital Oh, yes, sir. Um, the other thing I know that was mentioned by several people here, the concerns about the port strike. And certainly, 
uh, we at the Department of Public Health share that concern. As you might imagine, we're going through a lot of medical supplies right now. Our hospitals are going through a lot of medical supplies right now. Pharmacies, uh, medical practices out in town who've lost power are going to have to replace a lot of things that got too warm. But many of those things, many of those medical supplies come through our ports. The longer this strike goes, the harder it's going to be for us to get the medical supplies we need to get back on our feet. So certainly the sooner that strike ends, the better it'll be for the health of the people of South Carolina. Yes, sir. And finally, Mayor Knox White. Okay. A lot of very important uh, messages today uh, to convey. We very much appreciate that. But I just mainly want to uh, put a punctuation on thank you to the governor from the very first day when I think the storm was still raging when you called. So uh, you, you had good prescience that something big was happening and we appreciate support from the very beginning. Uh, Senator Graham and Congressman Timmons, thank you for being here. Uh, I know that uh, the folks out in the field are many, many crews that are cleaning up the streets, uh, the linemen that are out there, and certainly our first responders, police and fire. As this goes on days after days, it's very hard work. It means so much to them, Governor, that you and all of you have been here today to let them know you have their back and that they, you care and the support we have. That means everything to all of those workers and all of us here in the city of Greenville. So thank you for that. And thank you also to the Bond Secours Center for this amazing one-stop shop, if you will, for emergency assistance. It is amazing what's going on here and what this means to our community and that the health services, food is being delivered downstairs and prepared. There are bags of ice going out of here. All those wonderful concessions you have when you come to this center are now being brought back to the community for helping people. So it's an amazing resource we have here. So thank you all for being here and having everyone's back. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. 39, unfortunately. Um, all kind of things come through the port. It's, it's been estimated that one out of 10 people in our state are affected directly by the functioning of the port. And as Senator Graham mentioned, it's estimated that uh, this strike will cost us about $200 million a day. But any, any business that depends on things being shipped in to the port, and that's a lot of things, as well as those being shipped out, will be affected. The longer it lasts, uh, the, the worse it'll get. That's why we ask President Biden today to consider under the Taft-Hartley Act says that if a strike is is a, a threat to the health or uh, safety of the nation that it can be enjoined for a period. So that's what we, we're hoping that he will do that if it's not settled, not settled immediately. I know there have been discussions. I have not had them myself, but my staff has. We've been in constant touch with them and others. Do you think the rest of the Reserve Union have access to them? We'll, we'll see how the storm goes. We hope, it's, we hope that everything is back where it was quickly, but that's a decision that will, will be made at the right time. Well, we have had uh, an embedded uh, representative from FEMA since the, since the very beginning. They've responded very well on, on our requests. We, we were, uh, just took a couple of days to get our emergency declaration accepted by, by the president. We, we, as far as the, the, the money that is involved and the reimbursements and those things, those are yet to come. But, but in so far, we've had good responses, and we, we're very, very pleased. I think President Biden coming here today was helpful. I, everybody I've talked to has responded quickly, and I'm so impressed with the governor's team, the mayor. I mean, we're all working good together. I can't emphasize this strike needs to end sooner rather than later. I cannot tell you how serious this will jeopardize our recovery in South Carolina and North Carolina. This is going to jeopardize public health. It's going to jeopardize public safety. I understand trying to get a better deal. I get all of that. But there's a federal law on the books that allows the President of the United States to stop and enjoin strikes like this that can affect the public good and the public welfare. I'm here to tell you I know a lot about our port. It is the economic engine of the state of South Carolina. 
BMW, a lot of the cars they make here go through that port. They're eventually going to run out of places to put cars. Hospitals. There are a lot of med medicines that have been lost because they can't be refrigerated. The supplies will dwindle over time, and this port is an essential outlet to the world for South Carolina. So, President Biden, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your team. But I am urging you, I am telling you, I am begging you, end this strike sooner rather than later because you're adding misery to pain. And also, we, we uh, presented to him the plight of our, our farmers and the importance of that. And we, we hope to see some progress on that to, to help them. A lot of them go have to close up because of the damages. Pecan groves, new and old trees have been knocked down. It'll make you cry to look at it. And uh, a lot of livestock being lost because of the heat, because of the lack of refrigeration, the lack of cool. Uh, we got a lot of problems that that, that, that would help. But we're getting, we're getting, as I mentioned, we're getting help from other states, from, from the federal government. But the main help that we're getting is from the people of South Carolina, and it's really a a very comforting and heartwarming thing to see the way people are coming forward to help their neighbors and help their communities. Oh, I think bearing the lines is a great idea. Uh, Senator Graham, I think he raised that with the president as well when we were talking on the tarmac at the airport. It's more expensive than putting them up in the air, but also you avoid the expense of what we're going through now of trying to re replace them all. So they're the pros and cons, but I think that it is a, it's a, it will be a good thing if we can get it done. We're also hoping in, in some states they require, the uh, building codes require filling stations or convenience stores that serve the gasoline to have a generator uh, in, their, uh, in their system. We have not done that here, but I, th I think that, that the, the idea is a good one, whether it needs to be required or not. I'm, I'm hoping that a large, at least our larger larger uh, institutions, larger businesses will, will do that because that's, that's really part of the problem. We have plenty of gas in the, in the ground in the tanks, but when the power goes out, you can't pump it up. It's just down there. You can't get it, can't get it up. In the old days, you'd turn a crank and see it go, go through a glass jug and go into it. Those days been gone. So um, there are a lot of things we can do differently, I think, and that's certainly one of them, burying them. I believe it, well, in, in terms of, of deaths, yes. I think Hugo was 36 or something like that, 35. And this so far, 39, I, I hope that's the end of it. That's why uh, what was said earlier is so important, uh, Dr. Summer. But don't, don't have that generator anywhere near the house. Uh, we've had, I think, two deaths from that. We've had, oh, I, I can't remember the numbers, but we've had, uh, the most of the deaths had been from trees falling on vehicles or trees falling on houses. And we've had some cars washed off, I think two cars washed off the road by the water. Uh, we've had people that were cutting with chainsaws trees out of the road and got hit by vehicles. We've had people swerving on the road to avoid a tree or a limb and running into another vehicle. It's, uh, it, and some candles that were unattended that caught things on fire. There are all kind of ways that these accidents can happen and end up in deaths. So we urge, we've had enough tragedy. Uh, we don't need any more deaths. So we would ask people to be very, very careful. This is a good time to be very, very careful doing normal things that you wouldn't even think about otherwise. Yes, sir. I talked to Attorney General Allen Wilson uh, recently. Uh, they are out in, in full force. If you uh, know of anyone that is charging an unreasonable amount because of the storm, just compare before and after. You know, some prices will go up normally because of the lack of distribution. It's just supply and demand. But if it's, if it's real high, call, call the Attorney General's office and they'll take action because it is illegal to gouge prices in South Carolina. Well, 
Well, that, of course, will be a part of their budget what we're ho as well as that of the power companies. What we are hoping is that part of the, uh, the FEMA program, which we've been approved for in, I think, 13 counties, and we have seven more that we, we hope will be approved, for, approved quickly, that they will be able to receive funds to do that work. It might be 75% of the cost with 25% uh, left to be negotiated, but that's precisely what FEMA is for. The two, two types of, the main two types of things are personal, personal assistance at your house, damages to you or yours, and the other type is the public assistance for things like that, municipalities, uh, highways, roads, those kind of things. And we've been approved again uh, right off the bat for 13 of our counties, all, all along this, this sort from here on, on down. Uh, and we hope to have seven more. We just need those counties to get the information to the Emergency Management Division, that's the state, and they will send that on up to D.C. And we've been, um, Administrator uh, Deanne Criswell said again today with the president that it be approved immediately. So we just need to get all that information from the counties up there. Dr. Ed Simmer, Director of uh, South Carolina Department of Public Health. We do not have any specifics at this time. Certainly if North Carolina tells us they need help and we have the capacity to help them, we will of course do that in any way we can. Uh, but again, we don't have any specifics as of yet, but we are ready if needed. And thank you very much and keep your neighbors, friends, loved ones in your prayers. Thank you.